get us fired up this morning. Good morning, Virginia Democrats. And thank you all for getting up so early just to hear me speak. Sorry, so. uh, at least I didn't have to come after Tim Kaine yesterday. You know, America was born on a farm in Virginia. My favorite speech idea of politics, that George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, the Declaration of Independence, the Statute of Religious Freedom, um, the Bill of Rights, four of our first six presidents, eight presidents overall, Statler brothers, <laughs> Shirley MacLaine, uh, on and on and on. And now, Lou Ann Bennett, yeah. who along with Don McKeachin is going to change the balance of the House for Democrats. And, and I'm so proud that uh, you know, after 100 years, we finally get Tim Kaine on the ticket. Look, we, we have had, uh, and I just want to say hi to, to General Herring and my friends Bobby Scott and Jerry Conley and, 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 and uh, Mr. Klobuchar. Uh, look, there have been so many wonderful speeches the last couple of days. I just knocked it out of the park. With Tim Kaine last night, Joe Biden has the best speech I've ever heard him give. Uh, the president, we were, everyone was in tears at the end of that. Um, and, and just surprises. Hakeem Jeffries. I hope you listen to some of those. They're just wonderful things. I, I feel I have so little to add this morning. But I, I've been, this is my fourth National Democratic Convention. And there's a really a different flavor to this one than any of, I've been to. And let me take you back 32 years, because the difference in the flavor. 32 years ago, it was Ronald Reagan against Walter Mondale. And Reagan was running for re-election after a couple of awful years on the message that is morning again in America that he was proclaiming this optimism that, that our economy was thriving, that we're a great nation, that our future was even brighter. And he tapped into that sort of fundamental part of the human spirit, which is our optimism. Albert Camus said, right, in the midst of the, the d darkest winter, I found in myself an invincible summer. But remember, he stole it from us. He stole it from FDR and all those other Democrats who are great optimists. We have nothing to fear but fear itself. And it worked for a long, long time. We were the dark party, and they were the party of hope and optimism, right through the bushes. Remember, compassionate conservatism? But now, they've destroyed their brand completely. That was the darkest convention I've ever heard. You got Donald Trump personifying everything negative in our lives. It is the most scathing denunciation of a country that he would lead, which is just unimaginable. Pessimistic, negative, divisive, pitting one of us against the other, hate and rejection. Just, you know, we've heard this again and again and again. Some, the, the wonderful admiral last night, or, or so many, talk about immigrants stealing our jobs, Mexicans raping us, robbing and stealing. Um, Muslims have to be banned from our country. We have to make fun of people with disabilities. We have to punish women who've chosen to have an abortion. We have to abandon our six decade commitment to our allies in NATO, and uh, by the way, climate change is a hoax. You know, and yet, it's like Darth Vader or Ramsey Bolton or the Joker was running for president. You know? <laughs> but, but look at the contrast, because we've had speech after speech after speech from the bravest, humblest, most gifted people who have lifted us up with their stories. Um, Dan Malloy, whom I've known for years, who knew that he was treated as a child with an intellectual disability until third or fourth grade, and now he's the, the wonderful governor of Connecticut. Or, or Marty Walsh, who you know, was a tough alcoholic, you know, having to fight over his alcoholism to come back to be the mayor of Boston. Or little Carla Ortiz, you know, whom Hillary had hugged, who stood up there. That was, one of the, for me, one of the best speeches of the whole convention, talking about how Hillary had reached out to her, telling her not to worry, that we weren't going to send her parents back to Mexico. Every single story we have heard has inspired us. And everyone has appealed to the better angels of our nature. Michelle Obama. When they go low, we go high. And Tuesday night, after a lifetime of fighting for his democratic socialist values, after creating a new revolution in our grassroots politics, Senator Bernie Sanders graciously, generously, and humbly asked that we nominate Hillary Clinton by acclamation. If that's not going high, I don't know what is. Yeah. I, I, 
I hate seeing polls that say America's on the wrong track, which most of them say. Well, of course, but if all they ever hear is doom and gloom about how bad we are, then, then of course that's going to be. But look at how we win. Hope, change, stronger together. Um, the wonderful lines last night, all through the last days, about how, you know, yes, we can, si se puede. Not yes, you can, not yes, I can, but yes, we can. This is who we are, that we are optimistic, that we are strong, that we are brave, that we are humble, and nobody personifies that better than the miraculous, wonderful Tim Kaine. Yeah. You know? I, I, know, I know Tim's only going to be our next vice president, and there are many reasons why Hillary chose him. But for me, the most important reason is that in the worst and the most tragic case, of all the people I know in my life, the person best prepared, other than Hillary Clinton, to be president, to have that Obama-esque equanimity, that wisdom, that depth, that sense of character, is Tim Kaine. And we are very, very blessed. And so... But I, I love my new job. And one of the things I love about my new job is, is Bobby Scott and, and the chance to serve with Jerry Connolly. You know, Jerry is one of the wisest people on our Foreign Affairs Committee. I mean, he did really, you know, he was Senate, relations, Senate Foreign Relations years ago in his youth. But he comes to that as probably the, the intellectual stability and center of our Foreign Affairs Committee. He's great on oversight and government reform, or he has to stand up to the Daryl Ices and the Jason Chavises of the world, which is not easy. Um, he's a trusted friend, a great politician, and uh, let me introduce our Congressman, Jerry Conway.